Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar organized by JetBrains and WebStorm. I'm Paul Everett, JetBrains Developer Advocate, and I'll be your host. The topic for today's webinar is Web Types for View and Beyond. Today, I'm joined by Peter Tomiak, WebStorm Senior Software Developer. Welcome, Peter. You wear a lot of Hello. hats on the team, as this uh, introductory slide shows. Uh, can you give a quick introduction of yourself, and then we'll talk about where you're seated. Yeah, so uh, basically I have uh, quite a few responsibilities at the team, uh, in the team. Uh, I'm responsible for Angular, uh, view support, and uh, also uh, like a generic HTML support. And uh, I also have uh, a like 25% uh, project, which is uh, support for Neem language. Not sure if you heard that. about it. Yeah. Right. That, that's a language that I spend a lot of weekends getting 45 minutes into and then deciding, oh, no. I, <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could use it, though. Uh, to let people know, you're very obviously not sitting in the office. Where are you? What are you doing right now? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually on my way to vacations. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm sitting in a cafe. I, I, I spent some time looking for a quiet cafe. So uh, I really uh, like now there is nobody here. So, so I really hope it stays for the whole uh, webinar like that. And so uh, if we have any connection issues, it's because of this. But it's going to make it fun, too. Maybe we'll hear a little clinking in the background, people walking by, sticking. Maybe you'll get photo bombs. Somebody will stick their head in the back <laughs> yeah, and, so. and ask you about WebStorm. Uh, I know you're going to jump into the topic in a few minutes. But now, if you could just give us a kind of 20-second overview answer to what is web types? Oh, uh, that's a very hard job to do it in 20 seconds. But um, yeah, it's it's basically something which will, uh, I, I believe, help uh, everyone to get um, a good experience uh, inside the IDE uh, of uh, writing their code with some uh, web frameworks with their own custom code, uh, with their own code. So so basically, it's something which aims to uh, to make coding quicker, providing code documentation, code completion, and highlighting for, uh, it's something like uh, TypeScript did for JavaScript, though, let's say, something like that. I, I, I really hope this, this this will turn out like that. Yeah, uh, as I look at web types and look at what we're doing with WebStorm and across the company, we're really working on the developer experience. This really is a pretty interesting way to capture more information to help during the developer experience. Um, so you've been working on this for a few years. We have a lot to cover, so onward. All okay. Right, let me make sure I got the, yep, I'm on the right slide. Uh, we'd like to make this webinar as conversational and live as possible. Let's pretend we're sitting in the cafe with Pieter. If uh, you'd like to order a coffee, we'll bring it over to you in a few <laughs> minutes, wherever you're seated right now. So should you have any questions or problems during the webinar, please feel free to ask them at any time during the presentation right here in the chat in YouTube. We'll have a few pauses where I'll collect some things and ask Peter some questions. Uh, don't wait until the end. The WebSwarm team is in the chat. I'll be in the chat. Go ahead and answer, ask your questions. Some of them will answer immediately. Ask them as soon as you have them. Usually the most common question is, is this webinar being recorded? We are currently recording. The recording will be available in this YouTube channel. It's YouTube. It's going to be available basically immediately. The reason that I'm smiling on this is in five minutes, somebody's going to ask the question in chat, is this thing being recorded? It always happens. Yes, this is being recorded. So now that we're all set up, let's begin. Peter, explain web types to us and kind of show how it improves the developer experience. Uh, okay, thank you, Paul. So uh, let us start. Um, uh, I guess uh, we've already gone through the introduction. So so let me go straight to the topic. Um, uh, in the webinar, I'll uh, provide you with some background and history of how web types uh, have been uh, developed. Uh, what are new features? We'll do some live, let's say, coding. 
And then I'll explain uh, a, a new large feature, which is pat pattern uh, syntax. So I'll, I'll um, explain this in depth at the end of the uh, webinar. So uh, during uh, the webinar, I'll be using uh, view directives as an example of a, a pretty complex, uh, in its structure, pretty complex attribute. Uh, to describe from the IDE point of view. So I just want to um, uh, quickly uh, introduce those who are unfamiliar to, uh, with Vue. Uh, what is it about? So basically, uh, when, you, when you create a Vue template and you write an HTML template, uh, it is later compiled by a Vue compiler into a, a, a code which uh, works directly on DOM. So uh, view directive is a way to hook into lifecycle of a DOM element and alter it behavior in a way. Um, it has a it has a structure where every view directive is prefixed with a v dash and then we have a name of directive and then uh, an argument and some modifiers. So so this is a structure common to all, all uh, um, directives and some of them like uh, vion uh, provides uh, modifiers arguments some are just simple uh, without any arguments and modifiers. And the uh, directive uh, through the attribute value received uh, receives uh, some JavaScript code. Um, so um, having such a complex structure, uh, it is kind of a uh, challenge to provide within the IDE a, a good uh, code completion. Um, so for instance, you want to uh, document the uh, modifier format. Uh, this is, uh, for instance, a, a bootstrap uh, view uh, directive. And um, in WebStorm team, a uh, few years ago, we've been thinking on how to improve uh, experience of uh, view developers. And uh, like um, we tried to uh, figure out how we could um, statically analyze uh, source code of the view library. Uh, just a disclaimer, I'm, I'm talking about Vue because Vue was for us a kind of a, uh, uh, we tried to prove our concepts with a single technology and then expand from that base. Um, um, so, so we tried to figure out how we could uh, analyze the source code of uh, Vue library so that we can provide uh, components uh, and directives. And um, it proved really difficult because uh, usually the uh, source code of the library is, well, basically compiled, right? Uh, there is not, um, um, uh, there is no source code uh, very often. Um, so then we tried something like, uh, you know, uh, initialize view, run the library, and then try to figure out what is there, right? Um, this was proving so this was some improvement, but still uh, we cannot uh, extract uh, documentation at the uh, runtime, right? So um, so then we tried to figure out how we can like combine both of these. So we can, uh, for instance, get a source code, uh, like documentation from source code. And and yeah, this, 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 this also didn't work, of course. So, um, uh, so uh, we, like looked around and uh, I think the very good example is uh, how we have uh, how in JavaScript and uh, like uh, community uh, environment uh, TypeScript definition files uh, helped. I think everyone improved their coding experience because whether the library is created in TypeScript or in JavaScript, in CoffeeScript or whatever, you can actually create a TypeScript definition file which will uh, describe uh, the library API. And uh, based on that, IDE will uh, be able to, to show you auto completion, to show you a code documentation. And uh, it even works if the library doesn't uh, ship typings with it. Uh, you can just install the typings from uh, add types and PM namespace, right? So we tried to uh, figure out something similar for web, for HTML, CSS. Um, now, uh, we looked around. Uh, what was there for Vue. Uh, basically, the only alternative was uh, VS Code Vtour Metadata, which is uh, really limiting. Uh, it 
uh, it's also split into two files. So we we really had to figure out something uh, on our own. Of course, uh, every view library was also um, uh, providing their own metadata for uh, for their um, uh, for their libraries to prov to produce documentation. So we also looked at this, and um, and we knew we have to figure out something uh, new. So uh, our goal in uh, figuring out something new uh, was that it should be open source so that uh, other uh, entities, uh, other people, uh, linters, documentation generators, they could actually use that format. So, uh, so we didn't really want it to be like uh, JetBrains IDE only, OK? Um, we want something which is. Um, uh, which can actually be used by others. Uh, and it should be universal, right? Uh, we don't only want to support Vue and then write something new for web components and then something new for Angular and for React and etc. So we wanted something universal, uh, which is easy to create and consume and um, where you can deliver something up to date. And that's how we came with, uh, with web types. Mm, the first uh, version uh, we aimed at Vue uh, because uh, this was our uh, testing ground, let's say, um, and um, uh, and web types uh, in in the initial uh, our initial goals uh, was supposed to sp uh, and actually with the new version uh, we're expanding uh, to uh, basically everyone, not only view. So so. Uh, the new standard of, uh, of web types, uh, it is a JSON file as it used to be, uh, and it specifies contributions to HTML or CSS. Uh, there, you, there will be uh, typings available from at web types npm namespace. Uh, but if, uh, if this is a library, then uh, WebStorm or other IDs uh, will just download the web types uh, for you. Uh, so that you don't have to actually uh, provide them as, as dev dependencies. Um, web types are applicable also to your local projects and your private libraries. So you just have to link them in package JSON and, uh, and it works. Um, the schema, which is now available on schema store, is the schema uh, for the previous version, which supported only Vue. Uh, this, uh, once the, uh, the new version uh, goes out of technical preview uh, stage, uh, we will uh, publish it uh, and make the default one. Um, so uh, for those who are already familiar with, uh, with uh, web types, uh, what is new? Basically, now we have a generic support. Uh, there is a, a huge feature, uh, which is name patterns. So. Uh, as you know, the, the view directive and, and many other things, uh, they, they have some, like the, the, the name, it can be structured into a pattern. Um, so, so this is the, uh, the core feature of the new, uh, new standard, uh, that uh, by this, you can actually describe all the custom libraries, uh, uh, all uh, frameworks, everything, uh, I, I hope. Um, we will be adding CSS support, so we'll be able to uh, provide a list of uh, uh, CSS properties on, for instance, web component. Um, there are also various improvements like icons, uh, parsing TypeScript types uh, directly from the JSON, and uh, uh, it's also still in progress. We will be, uh, for instance, uh, validating whether the expected type of the uh, JavaScript expression is the one which is specified in, in web types, uh, you can add the uh, attribute enum values. And, and uh, there is so much more. Uh, of course, the previous version of the standard will work still uh, in a legacy mode. So there is no worries for, uh, for that, uh, that something will be, uh, uh, will be broken and the, old view, uh, the, the, the older versions of view libraries won't work. And um, all of this I'm talking about is still work in progress. Um, uh, there is like uh, a lot of stuff done, uh, but uh, we're still uh, working, and we're also uh, counting on the on your feedback uh, once you try it, uh, so that we can uh, uh, very early on in the process include your uh, feedback in the in the in the support, uh, because like it's it's obvious we we obviously forgot about something, and uh, and you'll know what it is, right? Um, Right now, web types are in use in uh, several uh, view libraries. Uh, 
And we are also providing uh, these uh, for, for, for instance, a view framework. Uh, this list will uh, grow much longer uh, once the new version uh, gets released. Uh, I mean, it reaches the stable uh, version. So uh, why why would we care about web types? Why would you care about web types? Um, as a developer, um, it it gives you an ability to actually read the documentation of uh, of the things you're coding with of the libraries directly in your editor. So. Uh, if I'm uh, doing, uh, if I'm adding Bootstrap uh, button component, I don't uh, have to go uh, to the uh, documentation to see what is the block uh, attribute for. Oh, I know uh, now it renders 100% with a button. If I if I want some detailed documentation, there is uh, there should be uh, URL provided by the uh, web types provider, right? And 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 we can we can then go to the um, to the portal. Uh, to find more. Uh, it will allow you to code complete and uh, do error highlighting directly in the editor, which is um, uh, which is really great because it's like um, uh, like you can uh, get the linting of, of the attribute, like misspellings, uh, all these things uh, already in the phase where you're coding, uh, which is pretty important because then uh, you, finding it in the runtime always takes time. And uh, what I like personally the most, because like uh, I'm 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 a Java developer, right? So um, and previous and before that Delphi developer, so um, so those are uh, strictly typed structured languages where you always get documentation, you always get list of properties available on objects, you always get uh, all the options you can use, and that's why you can intuitively explore the library. Uh, not on the portal, but directly in the code. So, so this is something uh, which, for me, is uh, is really important. And and I think TypeScript uh, uh, definition files is are something like that. Uh, they they basically should allow you to to explore the library without visiting the uh, the, the documentation portal. Um, very quickly uh, before we uh, before we go to the demo, uh, how the new format looks. Uh, it looks very similar to what it was before. There are a lot of new features. Um, at the beginning, uh, you need to specify name, version of the library. Uh, if this file uh, like uh, provides support for a particular framework, adds something to that framework, like a component library. Uh, then we specify the framework name. Otherwise, uh, the web types are applied to all HTML files, everything in the project. Uh, then we say what kind of um, uh, JS syntax for JS types, whether it's TypeScript. Uh, this is the only one supported right now. Uh, at some point, maybe JS doc would make sense, but uh, it depends whether uh, there will be such a, a, a large need from, from the community. Um, you can provide description of the uh, of the contributions in Markdown, HTML, or plain text. Uh, now you can also provide a default icon. So, so when you uh, when when user uh, opens code completion, all the elements from there uh, will have uh, a nice icon in code completion, for instance. Um, and uh, we've changed the name from uh, tags to elements because actually these are elements. HTML elements, HTML attributes. Uh, and uh, here is an, an example specification of uh, the slot element from, uh, from view. Uh, and, this, and this is like a full web types file, okay? So, so there is nothing more you, you need to, to, to show something like, uh, for something like that to be shown in, in the ID. Um, now, Let's go to the demo. Uh, but before, Paul, I think this is a moment where we can uh, answer some questions, if there are any at this sure. point. Sure. Uh, first question, how do you keep the TypeScript definitions in sync with this JSON file? Is there any tooling automation, um, or you just need to keep them manually? Well, um, uh, if you specify a type, like like mm -hmm. here, the, the attribute value has a type string, 
let's say it's going to be some object, uh, you just basically can specify a, a, a type named uh, as it is exported from your library. Um, sure. If you change the name of the, uh, of the type in your library, well, right now you have to manually change it also Got in it. web Thank types. I think this is a nice feature at some stage where, where the format matures enough, uh, where we can provide, of course, refactoring support here. Um, uh, I, I would see this like a place for, for refactoring support, but that's, that's something like in a, in a, I believe with all the work we still have with web types, I, I believe it's like a year before we will be able to provide such detailed mm -hmm. uh, support here. Uh, you mentioned about the schema is in the the web registry for schemas. Does that mean that when you're authoring this file, this JSON file, you have autocomplete uh, assistance on the keys that are available and squigglies? When you yes, yes. However, uh, the schema, which is now uh, published to Schema Store, uh, is for the previous version. So uh, if oh, you okay. want to yeah. start hacking, uh, let's say, or, or trying, let's say, uh, the, 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 the technology preview version, um, you need to download the schema or, or, or reference the schema, uh, which is now in our GitHub repository. Um, if you uh, if you visit our GitHub repository for web types, so just I probably the best way is to just type GitHub uh, web types, uh, and then you'll you'll have the repository, all the instructions on how to uh, start uh, with the preview uh, version are there. Okay, is this something you'll be demonstrating? Uh, that you'll well, get I'll, I'll be I'll yeah I'll be I'll be demonstrating uh, the. Uh, well, yeah, I'll be demonstrating that. Yeah, I'll, I'll do one more question, one that just came in. I'll save the other questions for the next uh, pause. Uh, we have a question. Is there some type check while building for production? Or is that one of the purposes of web types? Um, well, uh, the WebStorm and other IDs, uh, they have this ability where you can uh, analyze source code, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we're uh, right now we will be able finally uh, to add a type check for uh, attribute values, for instance. Uh. Um, but this is going to be ID specific, so uh, it's not going to be applied when you build from the script. Um, it would be really cool uh, if that happens, but this then the format would have to be supported by linters. Okay, sure. so um, yeah, like HTML linter or, or, or view linter, then they would have to be able to, to, to support. This is actually the uh, aim of the format sure. uh, so that linters could also consume it. Yeah, in fact, you had that on your slide as one of the bullets of the goals was to not make this be web store specific, that this is something yeah. that other kinds of tooling in fact, not just editors, but other kind of tooling like CI linters and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, the 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 previous version was pretty limiting, so I believe uh, it was uh, really WebStorm specific. Uh, with uh, the new version, I really hope uh, we could we can um, make it uh, more generic and consumable by uh, by everyone. Uh, of course, uh, we will need some JavaScript implementation of the pattern uh, uh, expansion. But uh, that will also come uh, once we once we stabilize uh, the uh, uh, current version. And uh, I'm sure it goes without saying that you would love for people to show up at the repo and file some issues about things they're interested in. And yes, of course. A little bit. <laughs> yes, of course. I have this uh, this on my last slide. <laughs> All right. Good. Okay. So back to you for uh, switching over okay. to the demo. Uh, okay. So now some time for some coding. Uh, well, uh, who who would like to code, right? Something for ID? No, we we'll do just some uh, JSONing, right? So okay, so so I have uh, crafted some uh, demo project for today. Um, uh, this is a a simple HTML file uh, which shows uh, this very interesting um, uh, form, and uh, it has a pretty neat. Uh, um, like uh, kind of uh, some 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 pretty neat stuff, which is uh, the script. Uh, the script uh, gets tags by uh, icon framework and icon framework size, and puts inside uh, an image 
of that icon, okay, with appropriate size. So for instance, let's say we want to add uh, an icon for uh, Angular. Let's make it large, okay? Um, so uh, as you can see, this is actually not that uh, fun. Not that funny, right? Because I have to write manually. I get this yellow things. So why not use web types for it, right? Uh, this is um, some of my custom code. It's not any framework. Uh, I just wrote an utility script to uh, to replace icon framework name tags with an icon, actual icon, right? Um, so uh, I would link my web types in my packet JSON in the local pro project. Uh, with the new version, you can link actually several web types uh, from the project. Uh, and uh, my main web types, um, I was already uh, added the code here. I just disabled it uh, so that we don't uh, use so much time for uh, actual coding here. Uh, that there's gonna be some coding, no worries. Um, so so uh, by enabling it, uh, I actually right now get uh, my uh, icons nicely presented for me. And with, oh, with Angular deprecated, but that's weird. Okay, we'll, we'll have to see what's what's wrong there, right? Because it's actually showing deprecated here. Okay, um, well, let's let's insert on the, on our Angular uh, icon. Let's insert icon, our Svelte icon, and uh, let's insert our React uh, icon and our Ember. Ember icon. Okay, so now our uh, HTML is uh, completed, but uh, let's uh, let's have a uh, look at uh, what just happened. So, uh, in my main uh, file, I've I've added a pattern. This is a new feature. So basically, uh, my pattern, uh, my and the template for the pattern is that uh, the name of my framework icon element should start with icon dash and there uh, then there is a place for an item uh, this is a, a, a let's say keyword in web types uh, unfortunately json is pretty limited so um, i i had to um, add some uh, string keywords uh, this is one of three of them um, and uh, for our items, let's take icons from HTML namespace, okay? Um, I have uh, added another uh, web types JSON uh, to the icons web types. Uh, so here I uh, provide contributions to HTML namespace and icons. So we have a uh, view icon, React icons, Felta icon, and Angular icon. You can see that uh, we can refer either SVG or PNG. And indeed, Angular is deprecated, uh, marked as deprecated here, which is, uh, of course, wrong. Uh, so let's remove that. Um, uh, OK, uh, so this is a good start, right? But uh, we also have this um, support for a small uh, thing. Right now, if I hover here, it will say unrecognized name. Um, well, uh, what kind of name, okay? This is uh, not really uh, uh, really verbose. So let's say uh, our item should have a framework name, okay? So now, uh, oh, sorry, I have, an, I, forgot. I, uh, I have to save it to the, uh, to the hard drive, okay? Uh, so now it will say unrecognized framework name. So we can, um, here, uh, we can provide a label for this section of the template. Uh, but actually, uh, we should add support for dash small, right? Uh, so we need to extend our template and provide a, a section which is not really required because it's optional. Uh, and uh, it will also have its own template, right? It will start with dash and then uh, we will have uh, or uh, small, medium, large. Okay, let's save it and uh, yeah, now it validates. Okay, so let's see what we get here. Uh, yeah, we get um, uh, code completion here so we can uh, autocomplete and provide a medium icon. Of course, medium is a default uh, size. 
uh, so we don't need uh, to to do more. Uh, and we have a large uh, large size uh, as well available. Um, okay, so uh, let's say uh, we, but uh, you know, we, we we do that code completion, and we don't really know uh, what does it mean that we have a small size, right? How many pixels it is? So let's document it. Um, uh, so in this way, we specify uh, some uh, just 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 static parts of the uh, of the name. Uh, we actually need to document, so we need to provide items. So let's add item uh, here, and let's uh, add uh, that our items are come from uh, sizes property. Okay, so we take uh, we add a sizes property here, and we will have a size a small. Uh, sorry, small. Uh, and uh, let's add a description to it. It's going to be 16px. Uh, we have a size uh, medium. It's um, 32px. And the last one is size large. It's, uh, it's 64px, OK? Uh, so now, uh, when we, uh, for instance, hover over that part of uh, of our uh, element name, uh, we we get information how many pixels it is, and also uh, we get uh, documentation here. So, um, so we can specify some static parts of the pattern, but you can also uh, refer to the list of items. Then you can provide uh, all the all the basic uh, all, all the information required. Um, okay, so uh, so the last part uh, of of this demo is let's say that our um, template is required. Okay, uh, so so we actually require our uh, sizes. Uh, let's change it a little bit. And uh, if we have uh, only items and the template is just hash item, then we can just omit the template part. And we can say that this part uh, is, uh, gives us uh, only sizes, right? So, so, we, uh, so we come uh, again back to, to our um, HTML file. Now, because the, part, uh, is, uh, the last part is required, we actually have to uh, provide it uh, so that it works. Um, there is a little bit of problem now because uh, all our icons are mm, provided with all the options, right? So we get large, medium, small, angular, ember, all the mm, possibilities. This is not really good. Uh, so let us add uh, another keyword. So uh, this is basically code completion. It, it, it only applies to code completion. So. At this point, let's show triple dots in code completion and don't uh, multiply or all the options. So now, if we go uh, here, let's say we get uh, our um, our options, okay, uh, and then we can auto complete the, uh, the last part uh, as before, okay. Um, so uh, so that's it. But um, again. Uh, this shows only uh, only the last section of the uh, tag. So let's make uh, this uh, auto completion sticky. Uh, I would call it sticky. This is the last keyword here. Um, so now uh, all our options will show with the uh, with the prefix. So if we are uh, in this part of auto completion, we will uh, get triple dots, and if we move uh, to here, we will get all the um, with with the prefix sticked. Uh, with the last la last part, and of course you can combine it uh, all together. Um, with this, I would say that uh, uh, I think this is uh, like the most uh, important parts of um, of the new uh, support. Uh, right now, we support elements, attributes. We will be supporting uh, CSS properties, classes, at, uh, and things like that. Um, so I guess uh, the next part is going to be about uh, patterns in depth, how the items resolution works, and uh, more advanced uh, informations about it. Uh, I think, Paul, it's a good time for another round of questions. 
Okay, great. Uh, my first is a, a question. It's from, um, it's just a, an observation. It looks like this doesn't require any special machinery in the IDE. It's just another source of information. Previously, you had to do code analysis to extract some of this information from special rules for each framework or something like that. So I guess where I'm going with this is once this information is in to the same standard machinery as everything else, you tap into a lot of the things that we've been doing with autocomplete over the years, right? Yes. So for instance, uh, we've migrated already view support and uh, like uh, before uh, to provide something like, like this, oh, right? right? Uh, it took like a, a, a week of coding, okay? To provide code completion <laughs> like that uh, for, for view directives, let's say. Uh, now all that uh, complex uh, machinery is 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 there, and we just specify in web types what we want to achieve. So we don't have to code anything, and uh, basically our uh, let's say we uh, we kind of uh, um, uh, made it usable or our uh, or all of our technical knowledge. Um, you can you can actually program the IDE through JSON. Or let's say like this. <laughs> And I'm sure that it's frustrating because some of these frameworks, they change occasionally and trying to stay ahead, uh, doing it in the manually extracting the information from constantly changing JavaScript frameworks is a soul crushing job, I'm sure. Yeah, and it's also uh, like not only for us as ID developers, but it's also for users because they, they have a new framework and uh, well, yeah, I, I just want to use it, right? And and uh, and oh, it's not so nice. I mean, for Vue, I have mm -hmm. so much good support, and then I have to move to this 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 framework, and and it's so like I'm not productive. Right. And it's not because the framework is, is 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 like bad, but because there is no tooling around it. And sure. uh, and I think the web types can can actually. Uh, uh, like hugely improve uh, the first um, experience of the framework for the developers. So, so, so I think it's a it's a really good thing uh, for for framework framework providers that they will be able to like ship web types with their own uh, with their framework, which will do like eighty percent of 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 the good IDE support. I mean, of course, sure. there's some coding involved, and even if the framework doesn't ship with it. You've made it dead simple to scratch your own itch by writing them yourselves, and maybe then you share it with other people similar to TypeShed, right? Yeah, that's exactly. That's the Python thing, but similar to uh, TypeScript definition files. Yeah, 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 exactly. And 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 if you create a PR to our uh, GitHub repository, uh, we will be pub uh, we will publish it at uh, okay. at Web Types namespace. So Got it. so if you have your f uh, library like a uh, Node module, uh, you can you can actually. Uh, publish web types to npm namespace through our github repository and then this will be automatically downloaded by ide when a user has uh -huh. this library in their project so so it's not like you even have to add the uh, install uh, web types uh, in your package json like sure. uh, a dev dependency so uh, okay. ide can like figure it out i'll switch to a couple of questions that just came in and if we have time i'll go back to the previous questions the first one is an actual user Someone who's doing it, but ran into a question. Uh, Fabio says, I'm trying to use web types in a view single file component library mm -hmm. with TypeScript emitting type definitions. Using my library, I can get the completion for my components only when I'm typing the component HTML tag. Obviously, you would need to import it first. But if I import it through the .d.ts file with import from and I register it, the auto completion stops. Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, this is um, uh, this is this uh, uh, like uh, this place where uh, information to, to web types and, and this is a work in progress. Uh, this is a reported issue. And uh, uh, basically when you have a, 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 we analyze the source code, okay? So, so the, from the source code uh, in your project, uh, we uh, we can extract all the information. Uh, I mean, not all the, yeah, only some information. Sure. And yeah. then on the other hand, you have web types. And if you import the component uh, from the code, we have to kind of 
joined together. So we have to figure out that this component is in this library and uh, the web types component for this is here, the information in web type. So, and uh, because this is, uh, there is a lot of resolution, code resolution involved, mm -hmm. uh, it's a pretty complex thing to do it uh, efficiently. So. Uh, without uh, freezing the ID for like uh, 20 seconds, okay? Um, so uh, so this is a known issue, and this is one of the uh, priorities for us to, to, to figure out. Uh, it hasn't been there uh, in the previous version. I believe now it's a very good moment to implement this, this support. Is this ticket in the GitHub repo or in uh, No, Utrecht? it's actually on our U-Track. And uh, okay. when it comes to issues, um, uh, for uh, with WebStorm, with the implementation of the standard, uh, it's really better to to file them in Utrack. Uh, whereas if there is an issue with the schema, or you propose mm -hmm. some uh, uh, changes to the schema, or you have some question about how to use, then GitHub is a good place for it. Got it. Uh, because like the, the um, WebStorm is an implementation of the standard, okay? Yeah, of course, uh, of course. And, yeah. and there we have a standard uh, in, in, yeah. in our GitHub repo. So I think this is like, uh, it's it's better to file the issues in, in our Utrecht support um, because this is also how I, uh, like I work with the Utrecht tickets. So even if you file it on GitHub, I have to copy it to Utrecht. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, next question is really broad, which means you can give any answer you want and it'll be correct. But it might be good about your vision for web types. Uh, does web types apply to JavaScript itself like an alternative to TypeScript? Uh, well, Whoa. it actually it actually could, but I don't think it, it, it has any uh, it has any um, I think uh, it would be difficult because uh, TypeScript uh, definition files are are really, really good for it. And uh, we do have a namespace JS in web types, um, but I, I think it, it should be reserved for something uh, which is in HTML templates. So uh, for instance, like uh, view have filters. I know they are not really used nowadays or, or, or something like that, but um, basically a, a, a view filter is something which is not uh, really uh, specific to JavaScript is specific to the view template. So uh, it's a domain of a web framework, let's say. And then this is good to specify it in a JS um, uh, namespace. Uh, mm. Another example would be also uh, Angular pipe, right? Uh, this is a part of JavaScript expression. Uh, but it's not really part of JavaScript. It's, it's some addition to it. Yeah, uh, right. So I would see that um, things like that, uh, this is the web types are places for things like that. So I would see web types more uh, linked to HTML, CSS, which really like uh, lack any good way to describe them, uh, to describe symbols in, in, in these files and uh, leave the JavaScript uh, to, to, to TypeScript definition files because it's, it's doing a great job with it. Thank you for making that last point. The web is actually bigger than JavaScript, as you're going to show in the next section, I believe, about, uh, or you're going to talk about it maybe about CSS and what might be coming for web types and CSS. Yeah, so uh, so now I would like to... Uh, I don't hey, know one, how, one more question before you go. Um, Jean-Christophe asked, uh, is this available in the latest EAP for like IntelliJ? Yes. I mean, uh, probably uh, today is uh, Wednesday. E yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It's, it's today is this being recorded. I can't no, answer no, no. the question. <laughs> no, actually, um, it's like it's still in progress. So probably uh, it would be best to, to wait for this week's EAP. Uh, right. to try it out. Uh, there are some bug fixes uh, already. Um, uh, and uh, uh, But you can already try it with the latest one as well. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So Jean-Christophe, try it when the EAP comes out. Give it a no, try. No, no, no. Actually, you can try it today. Now. Okay. All right. Either way, <laughs> before and after, either way, give us a ping on Twitter and let us know if it worked for you. Okay, back to you for the next step of your demo. Okay. Uh, just, just, uh, just a technical question. How much time do I have more? Since you are willing to do this while you're on vacation, 
it's up ah, to okay. you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. So uh, because like this is the the, the in depth of pattern expansion and and the things like that. It's it's uh, it can take uh, a lot of time. Let me so put I'll it try this to way. Be... Unlike every other webinar we've done, your numbers are going up, not down. So keep okay. going. So, <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, so um, let's uh, let's do some uh, like in-depth overview of the biggest feature I believe, which uh, which allows actually to uh, mm, uh, to describe uh, virtually any framework and any custom code you do for uh, changing how HTML behaves. Um, with patterns, okay. So, so I shown uh, a very simple pattern uh, before, and and shown how how, how we can uh, create one. Now, uh, let's see how it is done for view directive, which is a really complex one. Um, first of all, uh, I've added a, a, a I've I've marked view directive as a virtual thing. So basically, uh, view directive is not a real attribute of an element. It is something which is then processed by view compiler uh, to a actual code. And uh, it's not something which leaves there uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the DOM tree. Okay, so, uh, so this is virtual and, and it's important uh, because some, some things are then uh, uh, using the list of attributes. Like uh, if you want to bind to an attribute, there is a directive in view. Uh, which allows you to bind up to a particular uh, attribute, you don't really want to bind to a view directive, right? Uh, you want to bind to something which exists. Uh, view directive is a virtual attribute. It doesn't exist, okay? So so that's how uh, how we can uh, uh, um, explain what virtual means. Uh, then, because it is an attribute, uh, we can provide some information about uh, what value uh, we expect. And uh, we also provide uh, this uh, pattern for, for the view directive. Okay, um, so the pattern uh, will have the prefix. Then we will have the uh, item, uh, the the name of the directive, and we'll take it from view directives. Then we have an argument which has a particular template, and it's not required. Um, and we have a list of modifiers, uh, which is also not requ required, and that section can repeat. So we can also say that uh, some section of the pattern repeats. And uh, as a last, uh, we specify also value. Uh, now, uh, in case of view attribute, uh, in case of view directive, or for instance, in case of on click, on double click, uh, we have an expression in the attribute value. So it's not a like a plain attribute, plain text or number. We actually want an IDE to parse this as an expression, and. Uh, this is a, a feature which is not yet implemented. Uh, it is also uh, requires a lot of, uh, uh, it's challenging to do it um, uh, uh, perf in, a, in a performative way. So um, basically when we parse the ASTRI, we don't really want to perform a very uh, time consuming queries on the registry of web types. Uh, so we have to kind of uh, pre-compile <laughs> web types and, and create uh, the list of parses. So, so this is something which is gonna be uh, present at some point and it will allow you to uh, basically specify uh, that you want to parse the attribute value as an expression in the ID, get JavaScript code completion. And for instance, uh, if, you, if you write your own plugin, you will also be able to uh, add a custom parser. So for instance, uh, here we would like to parse it as a view expression because like view expression has some, uh, is, is slightly different than a regular JavaScript expression, okay? Um, you also can specify the type uh, of that uh, attribute value. So this is an expected type. So we evaluate the uh, attribute value type as much as we can. And then we compare with the uh, actual type. And then we can uh, say, uh, you, it should be Boolean, not string, okay? And this is also um, a feature, uh, like the top priority feature, which is gonna be added in a very nearest feature. Um, and we also can say that the attribute value is not really required. So we don't have to uh, actually specify the, the value. Uh, this is a pattern for a generic uh, directive. Uh, the example above is, the, above we have just an example. So now um, let's uh, 
add a view directive, okay? Uh, so we will have the list of uh, contributions like view directives, and there we add um, the uh, on directive. Uh, uh, we add description, we add doc URL, and uh, we also can uh, modify, alter the attribute value. Um, uh, so in case of on directive, we don't really want to parse it with a view expression, we want to parse it with a dedicated parser view on, and uh, the type will be void because like basically we will not uh, expect anything there. And uh, in case of uh, view on, the attribute value is actually required. Uh, now, uh, uh, now uh, as you uh, can uh, see here, um, our argument uh, for the view directive, um, we can't, at this point where we specify view directive, we can't really say uh, how the argument will behave, what will be there, because it is de it depends on the actual view directive, right? So we, um, so we uh, delegate it to an argument element. Um, and uh, when we, uh, and then when we specify our uh, view directive, like on, uh, we can provide uh, this information about what will be there in the argument, okay? And we will also specify the list of our uh, modifiers for the uh, on directive. Um, yeah, and uh, as you can see uh, here on the right, uh, we, we support, uh, for instance, Markdown. So uh, you can format the, the description. You can provide the code formatting. You can provide uh, uh, italic uh, font and all the things which are supported in the Markdown. Um, uh, well, the basic version of Markdown, let's say. Now, uh, let's uh, have a look at how uh, we what we do with argument, okay? so. Uh, when we have a vOn directive, this is a directive which uh, listens, uh, which uh, listens for an event, and then uh, when a particular event happens, um, it uh, executes the code in the attribute value, providing the uh, providing the uh, dollar event uh, variable uh, with the event data, uh, or also uh, depending on the modifiers, it can uh, it can it can do some uh, other things. But uh, the basic thing it's uh, that it bind, uh, that it um, you know, listens for the event. Uh, so, our argument should be an event name. Okay, um, it is optional, uh, so we don't have to uh, provide the event name uh, starting from a particular version of view. Uh, and uh, the uh, again, we specify a pattern. So we can have uh, events from the list of events, um, and. Of course, the um, uh, the events uh, like uh, we will have custom components. We will have some things which will also contribute events here. Um, so, so it's not like uh, this is a static list. Okay, uh, if we are in a context of uh, an element which contributes events, which has uh, in its in its uh, contribution it has uh, events property and then a list of events, uh, then uh, the attribute will see those events. So it will also provide you those uh, custom events from the component. Uh, and uh, we also want to actually accept all the events uh, because, uh, well, um, uh, when we have the view directive, uh, it can uh, be on uh, any component. So, so actually some of the components, they will not uh, provide the list of events, etc. So we actually want to provide, uh, to accept all the events. Uh, and we just don't want to consume the dot uh, because dot is from the modifier. So let's protect uh, and, and let's not consume modifiers. Okay. Um, so that's why we don't uh, match uh, anything starting with a dot. Uh, um, yeah. And, uh, and the last part of the pattern are modifiers. Um, uh, here, uh, our view directive specifies the list of modifiers, for instance, prevent. Uh, we provide, of course, description, and in case of prevent modifier, because uh, it will add uh, the call uh, to event prevent default, uh, attribute value is actually not required. So we don't really uh, need to uh, provide the attribute value. Uh, we can just write v on click prevent. So this uh, event will be prevented. Um, and the last uh, part of our uh, example pattern is alt modifier. And alt modifier, in case of view directive, is a very special one uh, because it is available only if our view directive 
uh, binds to a system event, uh, like key app, click, context menu, etc. cetera. The, the list is really long, so I haven't provided it here. Um, and uh, uh, it gets pretty interesting because we don't really want to specify any documentation for those events. We don't really want to define those events. So we just want to extend them. Uh, so this is why we have here extension. And our extension to those events will provide modifiers. And it will provide system modifier key, uh, which is control alt shift meta, and also a modifier exact, uh, which all those have some meanings in view directive. Okay. Uh, so, so with all these definitions, we can uh, provide uh, very complex rules for view directive using just JSON. Previously, I had to uh, basically I had to code it all in code completion provider with a lot of ifs, maps, etc. And I wasn't even able to provide uh, documentation for this. And now I can uh, also add the documentation uh, pretty easily just adding description thing. Um, so I'm, I'm I'm also really happy with web types. Okay, um, so here comes a very advanced thing. So um, how uh, we resolve it? Okay, how it happens that uh, our alt modifier is gonna be uh, actually resolved to that web type with this documentation, etc. So uh, when we process a pattern. Uh, of attribute, element, anything. Uh, we start with our initial context, which is registry. The registry will be uh, will be containing something from web types files uh, and uh, plugins uh, in the IDE um, can also provide uh, additional information based on source code. Like uh, when I uh, have a view plugin, I also provide um, additional context provider, which will, um, uh, which will uh, provide components from the source code from, from, from the local project, okay? If users don't provide web types, we still want to provide something. So we will provide uh, uh, some from our, um, uh, from the source code. And also sometimes there are rules which are, um, well, not really uh, possible to, to be done in web types. Like for instance, in view files, we have this top level components. So if we are in a top level element, we additionally provide list of view, uh, top uh, elements like for, for, from this kind. Okay, uh, so, so, so we have some initial uh, registry context. Now uh, we query this registry context for our, with, uh, with the v dash prefix and we find our view directive uh, element um, and we put it on top of the uh, resolve context. So resolve context is kind of a stack. Now the next part was we query for a directive, view directive. Uh, we have the name on, and uh, we find it in the registry in the list of directives. Okay, we also put it on top. Um, so, uh, then we query for the click argument. It was HTML events kind, uh, so it was. Uh, so we query all the elements on the stack again. So we start with on, and uh, our on view directive actually had this events property with the list of events and with the click event extension. And we also find the click event in the registry. So we put both of the, them on uh, our resolve context. Uh, then we query for the modifiers, like we, we had the list of modifiers. Um, uh, so <clears throat> we query everything in the resolve context. Uh, so we first query click X. There is no uh, once modifier there. Then we query click, no once modifier there. Then we query on. In, uh, in view directive slash on, we had once modifier. Uh, so we find it, we put it on stack, and then we uh, query V and registry, there is nothing there. And then uh, we query for alt modifier. And because we put all these things on stack, now we can uh, actually um, uh, find the alt modifier uh, from the click extension. Uh, if we wouldn't provide the click extension, then the alt modifier would not be found. It would show as uh, unrecognized uh, modifier. Um, and yeah, it's basically it. Um, so uh, there is there, there is no like a backwards resolve, right? So uh, if uh, something is specified afterwards, so uh, then we want, for instance, if, if, if modifier once provides some additional things for click, it won't work. Um, 
possibly if there is a framework which uh, has such a need, uh, <clears throat> maybe uh, we could uh, add such support, but uh, I think it can be counterintuitive uh, in some ways, like uh, it would be a backward resolve, something like that. I don't know. So, so it, uh, so it, uh, so the resolve works um, uh, uh, like step by step how the pattern is analyzed. Um, and uh, the last thing I wanted to talk is the milestone. Uh, sorry, the roadmap. So, uh, what we're going to do for for version two point zero. I just noted some uh, some bigger things. Uh, so we already did two milestones. Uh, we wanted to uh, first develop the new version of the standard and provide some initial support this pattern uh, evo uh, evaluation. And uh, we completed milestone two. That's why web, webs, web types are now available uh, as we migrated all of our view support to web types. So you can also uh, you can expect some glitches with view support at this point in uh, early access preview, uh, early access program uh, version of of uh, WebStorm and other uh, excuse me and other uh, IntelliJ uh, sorry JetBrains IDs. Uh, the next part is going to be a, a working is a working pro process. So one of the big things we want to um, we want to uh, support web types in CSS. So um, uh, you can actually add CSS to web types, but it won't show in uh, ID. So we have to bind uh, code completion providers uh, resolution uh, with the web types registry and uh, uh, and provide that connection. Um, it's uh, hopefully it's not going to take long because uh, all the mm, uh, all the complexity of how code completion is provided is happening in the registry. It's already it's already there, so it's just uh, to run a query for code completion items um, um, from CSS specific support. And uh, at this milestone, we also want to ensure uh, that our really long, long uh, term uh, goal, which uh, I tried to achieve uh, already some, some time ago, uh, support for web components. So basically that uh, we, that WebStorm has uh, some good support for web components at as far as uh, web types are support, uh, supposed, um, uh, concerned. So we will try to, at this point, we'll try to uh, provide, for instance, support for CSS properties uh, to show them in the IDE because this is one of the uh, features required for uh, for web components. So, um, so that's our uh, next uh, next uh, milestone, and then uh, at the last stage, uh, maybe not last stage, but it's also going to be ha happening in in uh, simultaneously. Uh, we want to migrate uh, the Svelte, React, and Angular support also to web types. Uh, so, for instance, uh, I know, uh, like in Angular, there are um, uh, you can you can have your custom event manager, and you can have cu your custom format of events uh, in your components. And this is now virtually unsupported, right? Uh, but uh, once we migrate Angular support to web types, and it's not going to be full migration because a lot of uh, actually Angular is um, is really nicely um, uh, documented in TypeScript. Uh, so this is uh, just there are going to be some parts of this support which will migrate to web types, but. Um, getting information about events is going to be one of them. So then you can uh, just simply provide uh, web types for your uh, with your custom library, uh, sorry, with your library for your custom event manager. And uh, the ID will just um, provide support for those events, even if they have patterns. Like for instance, uh, you want to add uh, event.prevent, like it is in view. Uh, for Angular, it will, uh, it will work at that point. Um, how can you get involved? Uh, well, uh, you can, of course, write web types for your favorite library. Um, let's uh, maybe wait a little bit with that until the support uh, gets out from technical preview phase. Um, you can definitely uh, improve web type support at this point. So you can provide feedback on our Git, uh, in, in our GitHub repository. Uh, you can report bugs, and you can also uh, improve uh, web type schema. 
uh, maybe with documentation, maybe with uh, new features. Um, thank you very much. And uh, basically, this is uh, a time for the last uh, uh, last phase of uh, questions and answers. All right, first, that was fun. <laughs> that was really interesting looking at how you've kind of deconstructed the grammar of some of these systems into the stack-based approach and all of that. It looks like the result of a lot of experiments. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, the, um, our, uh, the, that's why like I, I was saying Vue was kind of a testing ground because uh, the first version of web types, it was already pretty cool because people could specify Vue directives, uh, components, and Citra. Uh, but these patterns, they were they were missing. We had to code it, and uh, and this was something I really wanted to um, uh, to find some way to 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 actually uh, remove that coding phase from there. So so I'm really happy uh, that you find it uh, uh, well uh, useful and clear. <laughs> Let's go through some uh, questions real quick. Uh, Fabio, uh, I think you might have missed it in the beginning. He asked a question about automation. I know we discussed it. I think the answer is for right now, you have to write it by hand, right? Yeah, you mean automation like? Uh, I believe Fabio means uh, automating the creation of the JSON. Ah, um, ah yeah, right. Uh, like... Uh, well, uh, you can't really, I mean, uh, you can automate it, but uh, it really depends on uh, what are you automating it from. So so basically, uh, for instance, Vue uh, is using uh, JS Doggan, uh, as far as I remember. Uh, and, we've write, uh, and I've written a node module to uh, kind of uh, um, uh, expose the information from uh, the Vue Doggan uh, into web types, and you can actually automate it. Uh, that mm -hmm. way, um, a lot of uh, view libraries are uh, using uh, their custom build processes because they uh, they also build the uh, documentation portals. So oh, basically, sure. uh, so you basically tap into your um, documentation. Uh, yeah, build sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. get the information out of there. Like and some JSON, sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and you can automate it, but uh, of course, yeah. uh, if you're using some. Uh, you basically, ha yeah, you basically have to write a little bit of this uh, yeah, to tap sure. into the documentation or to write a plugin to the documentation um, um, uh, automation you have. Right. So basically, right. Uh, I would say that uh, you derive web types from your uh, documentation. Got it. Okay, Jean-Christophe asks uh, about web components. First, he says it would be great to have awesome web component support in the IDE. I think we all agree to that. Um, he says that uh, web components, the manifest for custom uh, mm -hmm. elements, is kind of similar. Is there any plan to merge, he puts in quotes, web types and custom element definitions into one standard? Well, uh, yeah, um, so that like, uh, there are two things to that. I mean, uh, from 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 my point of view, uh, because already a lot of libraries are, are already published in in uh, the uh, this um, manifest format, uh, will definitely provide an on-the-fly uh, conversion. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and and the and the format is very rich. On the other hand. Um, I think it's going to be lacking this pattern. Uh, yeah, it's stuff. not built so, complete. Yeah, so um, so I think there are advantages to 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 uh, to, to web types over the the, the manifest, sure. um, because uh, like if you uh, and and this is actually what uh, what also gave me um, inspiration to to do the the pattern support. Uh, there are icon libraries like Bootstrap has icon library and. Uh, uh, and actually, right now the web types is like six and a half megabytes big because each element has to be, each icon has to be documented separately. <laughs> okay, and 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 when you open the auto completion, you get like a list of uh, 150 <laughs> icons, right? And, and you remember that uh, ellipsis thing? Yeah, sure. 
Yeah. So 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 I think um, yeah, the there is there is sense uh, into 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 migration. Mm, well, and uh, we'll just go ahead and close out. Switch back over to my screen, but. Uh, thank you a bunch for doing this. I find this really interesting about um, improving the developer experience and having kind of just-in-time documentation. I know we ship now with the MDN documentation, right? Yeah. And that whole idea of, you know, first we make it easy to open your browser on the documentation for the thing your cursor is sitting on. And then we give a pop-up so that you don't have to leave your IDE and go over to the browser. In each generation, we keep going further and further. And now you're starting to pack things into autocomplete with web types. And I find all of those things to make the developer experience more seamless and avoid a context switch, uh, I find to be, to be really useful. You wanna add something to that? Yeah, and actually, uh provide this level of support which was there in Delphi 20 years ago for uh, <laughs> HTML developers. No, I'm, I'm not kidding, seriously. Back to the future. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, we'll go ahead and wrap up. Thank you so much for doing this when you should be on vacation. I hope you enjoyed the rest of your vacation. I hope we don't yeah. drag you out of vacation again to go find a coffee shop to do no. a webinar with us. Yeah, but maybe I, I, actually, we will. I won't promise. Actually, that's also my fault because, like, I was supposed to be on the first week of uh, June, July, of, of July, and this is last week of uh, June, right? Yeah, right. right. <laughs> it worked out. It worked out fine. You got to yeah, have it coffee. Out. Yeah. So, so uh, uh, thank you to everyone that watched. If you have any questions later, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, to reach out to the WebStorm team by email, social media, Twitter, etc. If you'd like to get more information on WebSwarm, go to our website at jetprains.com slash WebSwarm. We love your feedback on this webinar. What do you think about the vacation format? I think it's kind of cool. Next time I'll be on vacation and you'll be in the office. Um, so please feel free to contact us. Fill out the survey. We actually read those things. So let us know what went well, what could have been done better, what you would like to see some other time for a webinar. Remember, the recording for this will be made available on our YouTube channel soon. Please check out our WebStorm blog where you can find up-to-date information about news and releases. Pro tip, things are happening fast over the next four weeks. So there's going to be a lot of announcements about releases uh, as well as events and educational resources. So for example, the recording of this webinar will be published on the blog and we'll also send a tweet out about it uh, that's all from us today. Peter, thank you very much for joining us, showing us something that I think is going to make a big difference in developer experience. Thank you everyone for joining us. Hope you have a nice day. Thank you.